The May 11, 2017 meeting of the Williamsburg City Council will come to order. Ms. Scott, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Zhang? Here. Mr. Pons? Here. Mayor Freiling? Here. Vice Mayor Foster? Here. Ms. Ramsey? Here. Before us, we have the council minutes from the April 10 and April 13, 2017 <coughs> meetings. Uh, do we have any um, additions, corrections, edits? Mr. Mayor, I'll move that the minutes be approved as delivered. Seconded. Ms. Scott, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Zhang? Yes. Mr. Pons? Yes. Mayor Freiling? Aye. Vice Mayor Foster? Aye. 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 Next item on our agenda is a matter of special privilege. It's the Excellence in Service Award to Williamsburg, which today will be presented to Battalion Chief Robert Washington. Chief Washington, if you'd join me at the podium, please. This award is particularly special because it's a peer-to-peer -peer award. It's the employees of the city coming together to recognize one of their own for outstanding service. So the city of Williamsburg takes pleasure in recognizing Robert Washington for excellence in service to Williamsburg. Chief Robert Washington has faithfully and honorably served the citizens of Williamsburg for four years as battalion chief. From, from his very first day as a City of Williamsburg employee, Chief Washington has been a strong proponent of training and professional development. He has served as a role model to young and seasoned firefighters alike. He developed an effective training program, and on any given day, one can visit the fire station and witness shifts participating in a variety of training scenarios, often with Chief Washington as the lead instructor. His passion is ensuring that his crew is prepared for any situation and that they have the ability to mitigate any emergency situation they may encounter. In addition to Chief Washington's passion for emergency responder training, he also has a passion for physical fitness and has played a major role in the fire department's wellness and fitness program, implementing the work performance evaluation. This assessment tool ensures the physical readiness of fire employees to be able to respond to calls and to assist the citizens of Williamsburg. He is also concerned about the health and well-being of all city employees and helped create the city's boot camp, which meets to work out and train every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Robert Washington is an exemplary city employee and is vital to the success of the Williamsburg Fire Department. He is hereby recognized for his dedication to excellence in keeping with the best tradition of public service in the city of Williamsburg. And this is signed by me as mayor on behalf of city council and by Mr. Collins as the city manager, dated May 11, 2017. Chief Washington, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Let me just add for the record, not only is Chief Washington's work helping his, his fellow firefighters, it makes a difference in the lives of everybody here in the city of Williamsburg, knowing that they have, a, oh my, <laughs> they have a team that's, that's ready and prepared to do their work. Would you like to say a few words? Thank you, sir. I'll, I'll put this for you. Um, <clears throat> first of all, thank you all very much for recognizing me for just doing what I would consider my job. Um, I really feel like it's an honor and a privilege to be able to serve the community, to serve this community in particular. I worked for James City County for 17 years, and then the opportunity came available to work for the city of Williamsburg. The main reason I'm here, I tell everybody this, is the opportunity to work for really great people in a great environment. Uh, Chief Dent has been a mentor and an example that I'd like to try to continue to follow all throughout, and he's the type of person I try to model my life after. Um, when it comes to doing what you think is best and trying to make things right just because it's the right thing to do. Um, I try to live that myself. It's not always easy, obviously. Um, we all have our faults, but you know, people like him, people like Nicole Fury, uh, Chief Stone, Chief Snyder. Um, I've had people who I would have never thought, if you told me 22 years ago that I'd be in the fire service, I'd have never thought it would be possible. I grew up on an Air Force base. Only fire trucks I saw were green and they were on the flight line. So I saw a fire truck when I visited my dad, and that was it. So um, 
it was just an opportunity and things have worked out the way they have. So thank you for thanking me for doing the job that I love to do. I appreciate it. Thank you. We have two public hearings today, and we will hear the presentations and discuss them uh, simultaneously. They are PCR 17-008, Request of Quarter Path Associates to amend the Plan Development Housing District to A, increase the total number of adaptive housing units, B, to increase the number of adaptive housing units allowed in an individual facility, and C, to limit the total number of adaptive housing facilities in the city to not more than two. We also have PCR 17-009, request of Quarter Path Associates to amend the Plan Development Housing District rezoning at 614 and 620 York Street to convert the remaining motel rooms into 53 adaptive housing units for a total of 100 adaptive housing units on the property. Ms. Murphy. Mayor Froling and City Council, Quarter Path Associates is proposing to amend the Plan Development Housing District to increase the total number of, of adaptive housing units allowed in the city from 100 to 150, to increase the number of, of housing units allowed for an individual adaptive housing facility from 50 to 100, and to limit the total number of adaptive housing facilities allowed in the city to no more than two in the Plan Development Housing District. The second part of the request is to amend the Plan Development Housing District rezoning approved in May 2015 for this property to convert the remaining motel units into 53 adaptive housing units and associated amenities for residents as outlined in my memo. The previous approval in 2015 created 47 apartments, a new leasing office, mail center, community lounge, and co-workspace. And as you can see in this overhead is the, in yellow or orange is the 47 existing units and the proposed is outlined in uh, blue for 53 new units. This slide is basically the first floor layout of the proposed units. The second floor layout and this is an example of the efficiency units, which takes up one of the motel units. This is the one bedroom unit that takes up two of the motel units. And this is the uh, two bedroom unit that takes up three of the motel units. This property was rezoned to Plan Development Housing District in 2015. The adaptive housing project is located in an area that is designated by the 2013 comprehensive plan as core to commercial land use. It is proposed to amend the plan development housing district approval granted in 2015 by converting the remaining 68 motel units into 53 adaptive housing units. In my memo, I included the criteria for evaluating the project. This proposal exceeds the parking required for the change in use. It takes advantage of the city's planned development housing district by converting the remaining 68 underutilized hotel rooms into 53 affordable adaptive housing units, which helps to fulfill the housing needs in the city. It, it is an adaptive reuse which will provide workforce housing, is adjacent to bus stops, bicycle and pedestrian facilities, and is a, next to a recreational facility. Planning Commission held a public hearing on April the 19th. Other than the applicant's attorney, no one spoke at the hearings. Planning Commission recommended to City Council by a vote of 7-0, approval of the text change as detailed in proposed ordinance 17-07, and to amend the Plan Development Housing District to allow an additional 53 adaptive housing units as detailed in proposed ordinance number 17-08. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Mr. Getty, the applicant's attorney, is also present and will speak on behalf of the applicant. Questions for Ms. Murphy? No questions. And I'll just note that um, Councilman Pons has uh, stepped away because he's the owner of this property and so does not want to uh, participate or influence the discussion or the vote. With this, we'll open the public hearing and ask anybody who would like to speak to come forward. State your name and address, please. Okay, your email. 
Sorry about that, Mr. Getty. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> Mayor, members of council, I'm Vernon Getty of 1177 Jamestown Road. It's my pleasure to be here today representing the applicant, Quarter Path Associates, and its principal and your colleague, Doug Pons. Um, you all know the history of this ordinance better than I. Um, what I would say about it is the adoption of the PDH um, district and the original rezoning was an experiment that succeeded wildly. This is a true success story. Um, the newly converted flats of Williamsburg came online in March of 2016, and the project quickly filled up and has basically stayed full. The average income of the residents is just under $29,000. They're folks that work in the hotel, restaurant, and retail sectors of our economy with a mix of senior citizens as well. The conversion has improved the appearance of this property, and that did not go unnoticed by the city assessor since that came online. The assessment of this property has increased by 400 percent. The flats have clearly met a pressing need in the community for quality, affordable, flexible term adoptive housing. And I think this is a great example of an adoptive reuse of an aging and underperforming uh, motel-style commercial property. The requested ordinance amendment was narrowly crafted here um, to preserve the ability for 50 units to be done elsewhere in the city and still permit uh, the conversion here. Uh, as Carolyn mentioned, the proposal meets all the criteria in the PDH ordinance. Um, and I think this truly creates a win-win situation for the city and the owner by um, meeting the need for adaptive housing, affordable housing uh, in the city, and allowing the owner to put this to an economically viable use. Um, so with that, we would respectfully ask for you all to approve these applications. Glad to answer any questions. Questions? Thank you, Mr. Getty. Thank you. Would anybody else, anyone else like to speak on this matter? Mayor Freiling, uh, as a principal quarter path associates in a matter for, for process, I um, will recuse myself from voting on this application. But thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Pons. Seeing no one else, uh, close the public hearing, come back to council for discussion. I'm happy to approve this. Um, after our, I can't believe it's been since 2015 that we changed this, but when, uh, when the conversion was ongoing, we visited the property. These units are awesome. These are way better than apartments I lived in when I was in college, Some, most of which were provided by our wonderful, wonderful institution here in town. And... Uh, this is a private sector responding to a public sector issue, and it's doing it in an efficient and effective and responsible manner. I really I have no reservations. This, this corridor is, is in transition, and this is a positive step forward in that transition. So happy to approve this. Uh, likewise, uh, in fact, when I was campaigning for city council last year, one of the recurring topics of interest among constituents and citizens of the city was that affordable workforce housing wasn't uh, available enough. And so I applaud Mr. Pons for finding this need, seeing this need, and working to rectify it. I also think that it's good that it's a re-adaptive re use uh, not directed solely to students because uh, so often that's the the sole um, intent of, of new housing and this addresses those who actually work in the city and need a place to live and it's also pertinent because it is close to transportation and uh, and in addition, it provides a lot of options that I like, not only the studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, but also different lease opportunities for those in transition. So I support it as well. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I support this as well and happy to support it. Um, I think workforce housing is one of those big issues across the country that has 
that's challenging a lot of localities to find ways to increase affordable housing supply. And I think this is important now because if we want to attract the high quality residents to this community, we also have to have a place, workforce affordable housing supply for those folks who want to move to Williamsburg and call it home sometimes, uh, especially given the unique circumstances that we are a services dominant economy here as well. Um, it's consistent with the goals, initiatives, and outcomes that citizens have um, guided council on throughout this process. And I think, you know, moving on, moving forward from this, I think it's important uh, to note that I think we will be engaging with um, a comparative study on best practices to increase affordable housing supply in the city, which I think is very important. Um, again, a lot of localities throughout the U.S. are looking for innovative zoning um, practices to, to include affordable housing, and I'm looking forward to continuing that conversation. Thank you. Yeah, th there's no doubt that um, this project helps meet a critical need in this community. Um, we have a lot of people who work here who would like to live here but simply don't have that opportunity. We will never fully meet that demand, but this helps us take a few steps in that right direction. There's a mild amount of concern on my part that we about the preserving of the commercial property that we have in the city because we have precious little. And we simply can't afford to convert too much more of the commercial into residential. But this is in a location on a corridor that really isn't a commercial corridor anymore. Uh, we do have some uh, hotel properties up on the, um, close to the historic area, and then another one a little bit farther down. But for the most part, it's turned into a more residential feel. And so for that reason, it seems to fit in this area. But I, and one of the most important things, though, is that it is a good adaptive reuse of an existing older motel whose structure no longer fits the, um, the demand of that industry. And so rather than let a property go into disrepair or not invest in it, I appreciate the applicant's willingness to in invest significant amounts of money into this property to make it more aesthetically ap appealing, to improve the corridor, and at the same time to meet that demand that we've all mentioned. So I, um, I fully intend to support this too. We have two items to vote on here. Uh, Ms. Shelton says we can vote on them at the same time as long as we make, make it clear in the motion that we um, are addressing both ordinances, if somebody would like to make a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that uh, Council approve uh, proposed ordinance 17-07 and approve proposed ordinance 17-08. Uh, Second. Second. Call the roll, please, Ms. Scott. Mr. Zane. Aye. <clears throat> Mr. Pons. Mayor Freiling? Aye. Vice Mayor Foster? Aye. Ms. Ramsey? Aye. They both passed. Mr. Pons, you're welcome to come back and join us again. <laughs> this takes us to item five on our agenda, budget adoption. It's the budget for the fiscal year commencing July 1, 2017, proposed resolution 17-06. We've had a fair amount of conversation on this. We've had multiple presentations on this. Um, anything to add, Mr. Collins? I'd just point out, uh, City Council, that the budget before you includes the items presented by staff, finance staff, at Monday's work session as presented. Um, it is a balanced budget. It's being requested for adoption within the time set by state statute. Staff is at your disposal if you have any additional questions at this time. This is the most important thing we do sets our goals for the next year, sets what we're able to achieve for upcoming years, um, yet it generates probably the least public input of anything we do. <laughs> Counterintuitive. Thanks to staff for putting together a strong budget, one that really encaps encapsulates council's objectives and really appreciative of the conversations that have gone on over the last year that has brought us here. I would second Scott's uh, comments as well. Thank you to the staff for, for all of that you've done and also the explanation to me as a new council member about the processes and what all's involved. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't have any issues with the budget. I think it's, um, it has been uh, 
put through the, the all the due courses that it needs to to, to get to where it is. Um, you know, one of the benefits of, of the city being well managed and, and kind of a tight community um, is that things are, are pretty pretty much predictable. Um, there there aren't big uh, you know budget items that that jump out at us, um, and so I think for that um, we're able to you know year after year present a budget or have the city manager present a budget and we approve. Uh, that doesn't really call for any drastic changes in that. Uh, I think and that speaks to, you know, one of the points that Councilman Foster, Vice Mayor Foster mentioned that people don't show up to, to talk about it. And so, um, yeah, I'll be supporting this as well. And, and just to echo what Ms. Ramsey said as well, I, as a new council member, I do appreciate the staff uh, and, and to you also as Marvin as well for, for guiding through this process for a new council member. Um, Deeply appreciate it. And to echo Scott's point, I mean, you're right. There's typically no public input, which is which is mesmerizing uh, at times. But I think it hits a lot of the the budget this year hits a lot of the stuff that we've covered with our goals, initiatives, and outcomes process. And I'll bring that again. It's really a way to, you know, implement, I guess, or find ways to to express uh, citizens' guidance on what's most important, those priorities for the city. And really puts the the money and the the meat to the bones there. Um, I do want to note that I appreciate staff for working um, uh, with uh, with the sheriff's funding position as well. I know Sheriff Bob Deeds and also uh, Chief Deputy Dave Hard Hardin's here today, and that's something that we had to work in partnership with um, our James City County counterparts. Um, moving forward, uh, just because lo local governments in general by nature has a lot of uh, restricting um, needs and ends to meet. Um, you know, I, I think about, I just recall uh, from this past year, education funding, which is in partnership with our James City County system with the budget gap. That, that concerns me as one of the funders um, with the city and the joint school system. Um, you know, the increasing EMS police fire needs, um, we're able to fund them this year, but I think those, those issues are still looming in the future and that that the city's uh, ability to respond to that resiliency will be, be tested. But I, I, am, I am very thankful for the city's best management practices. I don't think a lot of localities in Virginia could boast that. So I'm, I'm happy to support this. You know, there's a lot of underlying structure in the city that's funded by the budget. And then there are some other things that aren't just the same old day-to-day -day operations that are funded in the budget. And what a lot of people may not realize is that the drafting and crafting of this budget really began back in August of last year when Ms. Ramsey and Mr. Zhang were very new to council, when council got together and started the conversation on goals, initiatives, and outcomes for the next two years. That is the document that helps drive a lot of what is in this operating budget and almost everything that's in that capital improvement budget. And it's an incredible amount of work that staff puts into it, not only to pull it all together, to tie the GIOs to the financials, but also to make it clear and transparent to the public and to explain it to us so that we understand it too. And that, that takes a little bit of patience. Um, so I just want to take this opportunity to thank everybody in the city who helps with this and everybody in the city who helps day in and day out in the use of the funds that are entrusted to them by the citizens of this community, being good stewards and producing the tremendous results and giving pe people the reason they all like to live here. And it's all because of the hard work of staff. I fully intend to support this and would appreciate a motion. I move that Council adopt Resolution 17-06, Budget Adoption Fiscal Year 2018. Ms. Scott. Mr. Zane. Aye. Mr. Pons. Aye. Riley? Aye. Vice Mayor Foster? Aye. Ms. Ramsey? Aye. Takes us to uh, reports. The first is a monthly financial statement. Mr. Collins, anything you'd like to highlight? Staff's available if, if council has any questions. Sir. Seeing none, that takes us to monthly departmental operating reports. I would just point out that our, our operating reports are likely to, to have a new look moving forward. So in, in the coming months, uh, expect a presentation from our IT director, Mark Barham, who's been working diligently with our department heads at, at updating that look. Um, as, as council has directed through, through our conversations, uh, we, we're trying to become 
active in, in how we communicate and express. We, we collect a lot of data and performance measurement as, as a city. And um, one of the ways we've identified as a senior management team that we can improve is how we communicate that data in a meaningful way to you as a council and to, and to the community as a whole. So if you have any questions on the operating reports, we'd be happy uh, to answer them. Um, we look forward to a, a new format moving forward. Okay, that takes us to city manager reports. Mr. Collins? We have one, and, and I'll hand it off to the fire chief to, to handle. Welcome, Chief Dent. Thank you. Mayor Freiling and members of city council, as permitted by the Code of Virginia, localities may appoint and grant police powers to a fire marshal and to assistant fire marshals for the purpose of enforcing fire-related offenses and investigating such violations of the law. Pursuant to the code, the fire marshal must complete a course for mar fire marshals with police powers designated by the Virginia Department of Fire Programs in cooperation with the Virginia Department of Criminal Justice Services. The position of fire marshal in the city of Williamsburg has been vacant since the retirement of Captain Humphrey in December of 2015. Although our assistant fire marshal, with the assistance of some of our mutual aid partners, has conducted fire-related investigations, this area of fire operations has been understaffed. This is not optimal for enforcement of the code and for related investigations within the city. In the time after Captain Humphrey's retirement, um, the length of time it took to fill the position uh, we took the previous job description and changed it, as I mentioned in previous meetings, to focus more on that community risk reduction. Uh, we held a com competitive promotional process, and at the conclusion of that com competitive promotional process that included both internal and external candidates, Carrie Middlebrook was select selected to fill the captain position for community risk reduction. As part of his community risk reduction responsibilities, that's where the, the responsibilities of the fire marshal falls as well to conduct those investigations and enforce fire-related offenses. Uh, Kerry's here in the audience today. For those of you that may not know him, Kerry's a 12-year veteran of the fire department, and he demonstrates a genuine passion to serve and protect the citizens and visitors to Williamsburg. Some of the qualifications for this position, Kerry, uh, earlier in his career, because he had that passion, he used his own time and his own funds to take some of the certifications that qualified him for this position. Captain Middlebrook will take the necessary fire marshal course as soon as it is available and prior to the exercise of any police powers associated with the appointment. Currently, the Virginia Department of Fire Programs is updating that program. It is expected to be online uh, in July of this year. Um, they found that um, the course was somewhat outdated, so they're taking the time, a six-month period, to revamp that course. And Captain Middlebrook will enroll in that course as soon as the course is available. Uh, with that, I recommend City Council appoint Kerry Middlebrook to Fire Marshal for the City of Williamsburg. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. No questions. Congratulations. Yes. Congratulations. Uh, just from a uh, professional perspective, I've had um, uh, Mr. Middlebrook come to the to the my place of employment and my work, and uh, I've found him to be extremely dedicated, knowledgeable, and, and a pleasure to be. Uh, to have working uh, for the city, so congratulations. Thank you, Chief, and congratulations to Ms. Uh, Millbrook. May I have a motion? Move the City Council to adopt proposed resolution 17-07 as presented. Second. Ms. Scott. Mr. Zane. Aye. Mr. Pons. Aye. Mayor Farling. Aye. Vice Mayor Foster. Aye. Ms. Ramsey. Aye. Congratulations, Mr. Fire Marshal Middlebrook. <laughs> takes us to our city attorney report. Nothing today. Unfinished business? If I could, with the fire marshals here, I just want to remind everybody that uh, the volunteer firefighters have been out uh, soliciting donations and just want to remind the community to, to make those donations if they have funds available, goes to a good cause and, and helps us all ultimately. Thanks for mentioning that. Anything else? It takes us to new business, appointments to boards and commissions. Mr. Foster? I move that effective July 1, 2017, City Council reappoint Circuit Court, Ju Circuit Court Judge Michael McGinty to the Colonial Community Criminal Justice Board for a three-year term to expire June 30, 2020. A 
appoint Pat Patricia Rubline to the Williamsburg Area Arts Commission for a three-year term to expire June 30, 2020. Adam Steely and Jessica Hahn to the Economic Development Authority for four-year terms to expire June 30, 2021. Susan Gennaro and Peter Wallentis to the Social Services Advisory Board for four-year terms to expire June 30, 2021. And James Axtell to the Library Board for a four-year term to expire June 30, 2021. Second. Ms. Scott. Mr. Zane. Aye. Hans. Aye. Mayor Riley. Aye. Vice Mayor Foster. Aye. Ms. Ramsey. Aye. This takes us to open forum, and we have one speaker's card today, Mr. Gary Shelley. Good afternoon, Mr. Shelley. Good afternoon. Thank you. I am Gary Shelley. I live at 205 Indian Springs Road. I'm here today for the fifth time requesting a response for an issue that is of concern to me. I've stated the issue quite clearly to you. To refresh, I will read verbatim from our minutes of the January City Council meeting. Mr. Shelley addressed the need for honesty and transparency and the responsibility leaders have to respond to citizen comment. He noted the issue of missing minutes from a City Council retreat after which a document was belatedly inserted into the record of minutes. He asked the only current council member who was present at that retreat, Mayor Freiling, why council did not provide minutes to the public, and he asked that the issue be addressed. He added that we can only move forward when we have addressed the past. And that more than anything, we need assurances from our mayor that under his leadership, all citizen concerns will be addressed and that our government will function honestly and transparently. The purpose of my January appearance was twofold. I did want answers to the concerns I had regarding the minutes, certainly. But more importantly, I offered you, Mayor, a gift, an opportunity to demonstrate strong leadership, to assure the public that you would respond to their concerns honestly and transparently, and above all else, that striving to earn the public's trust in our government will be the most important guiding principle of your service as mayor. At that January meeting, I congratulated you on your selection to be our mayor. And I said it was well-deserved. I'm afraid that I was badly in error. Not only did you fail to respond in January, but also in February and March, when I again asked directly that these concerns be addressed. I invited you to write me, to phone me, email me, knock on my door. At the April Council meeting, I expressed my frustration and my profound disappointment in your refusal to respond. I will now address the other members of our council, our city manager, our city attorney, staff members, anyone else in the building here or anyone who's watching. If any of you feel that my simple request is inappropriate, please call me. If any of you can provide justification why Mayor Freiling should remain silent and not respond to this issue, by all means, please speak up or contact me. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Shelley. Would anybody else like to address council? If so, please come forward, state your name and address, and if you could keep your comments to five minutes or less. Seeing none, we'll close the open forum. I believe we have matters for closed session. We have two pages worth of matters for closed <laughs> session, so bear with me. Move to go into closed session pursuant to Section 2.2-3711 of the Code of Virginia for the purpose of discussing one personnel matter per subparagraph 1 concerning appointments to boards and commissions. Two legal matters per subparagraph 7 for the purpose of consultation with legal counsel and briefing by staff members, consultants, or attorneys pertaining to actual or probable litigation concerning a real property tax appeal. Or consultation on specific legal matters requiring a provision of legal advice by counsel concerning an administrative investigation. And pursuant to Section 2.2-3711, subparagraph 40 of the Code of Virginia, for the purpose of discussing two matters involving confidential records excluded from release under the Virginia Freedom of Information Act, and one pursuant to sub Sections 6 and 29 regarding the negotiation of a contract expending public funds where the bargaining position of the city would be adversely affected by public discussion. Second. 
Ms. Scott? Mr. Zhang? Aye. Mr. Pons? Aye. Mayor Friley? Aye. Vice Mayor Foster? Aye. Ms. Ramsey? Aye. Council will take a brief recess and reconvene in closed session. Thank <laughs> you.